Hi, and welcome back. We are checking out episode three of the Time Bandits today. Uh, Apple TV is doing something very strange. They put out two episodes again. So not just the premiere two episodes, no, two episodes now. So we're going to have episode three and then episode four tomorrow. This tells me that Apple TV doesn't really have confidence in their own show. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this episode and see how many historical inaccuracies we can find just by watching. So the sister is back and now realizes that nobody's there and... There's glass, and the door is broken. She's very bright, this one. Oh, it gets so much better. She thinks this is a joke and just goes, ugh, and turns on the uh, robot to, you know, the, the rumble robot or whatever it's called. In her quest to find her family, she goes into Kevin's room, opens up the closet, and sees these Polynesian sailors, or... Kayakers or canoers or I'm not entirely sure what to call them. We have a conversation about the demon and that one of them actually dated the huntress. All right, now this is looking like a cool time period to be in. Um, those look like they're supposed to be dinosaur eggs. Now, yeah, he's superhuman. That's fine. As critical as I have been of this entire show. I have to say, that creature that they created looks freaking awesome. They left that period pretty quickly, and now it looks like they are in the Middle Ages, which, I mean, that is the title of this episode, Medieval, so makes sense. Now in the original, they went to the Middle Ages and met Robin Hood. Will we meet Robin Hood again, or is it going to be Lady Marian? We'll see. Today, it may seem like I'm giving this show a lot more praise than what I have been. The jokes, they aren't landing. That's still the same. But the visuals, I mean, throughout the, full, the entire show so far, the visuals are actually pretty good. And I'm kind of impressed for a show that they are at this quality. I mean, compare the visuals of this to the visuals of Disney Star Wars. This year's better. A thousand times better. Making this prediction now, you know, right after I praise this, I believe the Huntress here is going to turn out to be trans. So they are in the Middle Ages. They are accused to be witches. He still has the dinosaur fossil or, well, skeleton head of the Triceratops or something similar. And they think it's a dragon, and I will tell you this, there is a lot of female ear-bleeding screams in this episode. This is like the second or third time now. From witches to dragon slayers. So I wonder in what era that they actually are, and I wonder if they're if we are going to find out. So that we know if witches would actually be a problem in this era or not. And at dragons, I guess if it's early Middle Ages, like Dark Ages, really? Maybe? Since you did have St. George. I had to take off my sunglasses for this so you can see the sincerity in my eyes. Yes, see the sincerity in my eyes. The jokes are so boring. Like, I don't think a kid will be laughing at these. And an adult can't laugh at them either. They are so bad. All right, this should narrow it down a little bit. They have said that the Pope has declared cats are the tools of evil. And they are talking about the plague. So, let's see if I can find anything. All right, so we found something quite quickly. 
Pope Gregory the Ninth, a cat's worst nightmare. Pope Gregory the Ninth was born circa 1170 as Uglino Ugo di Conti di Serdni Serdni in Anagni, southwest of Rome, in the Papal States. He has been remembered in history as the medieval pope that declared war on cats. He ordered a mass extermination of felines to keep the devil at bay. It's thanks to Pope Gregory the Ninth that people still believe that black cats are unlucky. Arguably, Pope Gregory's most intriguing papal bull was issued in 1233, and it related to cat. The bull had far-reaching consequences. About the same time it began to spread globally, it moved from Central Asia to China in the early 1200s. Remember, this is 1233 when this decree happened. And reached the Black Sea in the late 1340s. Hitting the Middle East and Europe between 1347 and 1351. The Black Death had aftershock still felt in the early 1700s. There is no Black Death. There is no plague. Why is the medieval guy talking about the plague as if it happened? As if it could happen anytime soon again. I guess that's the next topic we're going to be talking about once I get everything ready over on the other channel. The town mayor, whatever he is, wants the dragon slayers to take care of a problem that they have. And before they even hear him out what it is, they agree to it because you know, dragons aren't real. And then they have to go up against an army and then they're like, oh, hold on. I, no, no, no. And now the town folks are back to, well, if you aren't a dragon slayers, you must be witches. So here is a little snippet. Witch hunts and accusations of witchcraft began in the early 15th century and lasted approximately 300 years. They were more numerous in France than in other European countries or kingdoms. Now, that being said, there are mention of witches in the classical antique era. But we don't, in Europe, there was no witch burning, witch trials, stuff like that, until the early 15th century. So I guess this is the sheriff and his army that they have to defeat. They came to them. To the town. Penelope boasts that Bidelic can best seven men alone. You see him being dragged off and saying there were eight of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to see if I could laugh at this. I can't. That felt so wrong. Sounded wrong, too. Oh, God. So they keep talking about the sheriff. So far, I couldn't figure out who, which sheriff they are talking about. If they are talking about the sheriff of Nottingham, the, the famous one, like with Robin Hood, King John, King Richard the Lionhearted. We are talking about that particular sheriff. We're way off on the time frame here. Because it doesn't fit together with the Pope calling for the extermination of the cats. Which would have been like 20 years after the Sheriff of Nottingham, the famous one that we would know. The Great Sheriff of Nottingham. Yes. So I guess now the sister is searching for her parents and possibly maybe Kevin and is following in the footsteps of the Time Bandits. She's now with Madame Shang. She is claiming that they claim that she is a witch. And Kevin asks if witches don't get burned. Well, in this instance, the witch says that she doesn't because she's there to heal the wards. Witches weren't burnt yet. They're like, 
200 years too early. So while they are getting prepared to be burned at the stake for witchcraft, which doesn't make sense, the other three are going to go and try to get to the Huns and bring the Hun army to defeat the sheriff. Not to be mean, but the guy on your right is laughing a lot. He reminds me of a friend of mine. Marco, you know who. A female soldier in 1200s. I'm going to say 1200s because it doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. I know that she looks very manly. She still wouldn't be in a soldier's uniform. Very historical. These jokes just fell so flat. So Kevin and the others convinced the soldiers that if nobody tortures each other there, because that's the whole system, I guess. I guess, number one, if he doesn't decide to burn these people, he's going to be tortured by one guy. And if he doesn't decide to torture the first guy, there's other two who are going to torture him. And it's a whole system. And they talked about, yeah, if everyone decides not to torture each other, the power lies with them and not with the sheriff. Now, this guy goes up and is like, all right, burn him. And the soldier is like, well, we decided not to burn them. OK, sure. But here's an argument. You also don't get paid. And you will lose all of your rights, your privileges that you've uh, accumulated as soldiers. Mm, that would probably motivate them. But instead of, you know, having a logical argument, he decides, you know what? I have tortured so many people. I don't feel like it. Nobody can torture me because the sheriff himself, he, he's not going to torture me. And someone bring up the fact that you also won't get paid. This is what the sheriff is doing. Kevin is trying to convince or teach the peasants of the 1200s that dragons don't exist. They are dinosaurs and they lived a long time ago. And also, don't be afraid of witches. There is no such thing. I guess they uh, released the dragon in the Middle Ages. His sister is now in Troy. All right. Thank God this episode is over with. There was so much wrong. I can make a story about Pope Gregory the Ninth. I can make a story about the Black Death. I can make a story about the Sheriff of Nottingham. Adding in Richard the Lionhearted, King John, Robin Hood. Probably a few more if I wanted to. I can put I can make a video about witch burnings. So there is quite a bit to get into once I get everything set up and actually start doing my documentary. I've I've started work on it. I've got an intro basically almost finished. Maybe still has a little bit of fixes, but it's getting there. Hand, but it's getting there. Anyway, thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, please smash a like button. And if you didn't like it, you know, give me a thumbs down, whatever floats your boat. Leave a comment down below what you thought of this episode. And if you are looking forward to me doing videos about the actual history and not just leaving you dumbfounded by whatever the show decides is historic. Anyway, thank you for stopping by. Until next time, take care.